What's up guys, it's Austin with Pickleball Playbook. And today I'm gonna be taking you through my three favorite volley wall drills. Volley wall drills. Um, something to note before we begin is I'll typically only do volley drills and dink drills against the wall. I will do some drive drills. I think that it can be beneficial, but with the overall spin on drives when people are hitting back at you, it's best to practice that with a ball machine or with a partner. It's optimal with a partner, second ball machine, third, actually the wall. I don't do drop drills, obviously, for obvious reasons. If you hit a drop, it's not gonna make it back to wherever you're standing where you'd normally hit the drop, so it doesn't make much sense. Um, but yeah, typically I will only do volley drills and dink drills against walls. So with, with all that said, if you guys are needing to do other types of drills, uh, check out the link in my description. I use a slinger bag, I've been using it for the last six months. It's awesome, but the link's in there. You guys can check it out if you're in the market for a ball machine, maybe you don't have someone to hit with all the time. So first drill, let's head into it. This one is lateral volleys. And what I'm gonna be doing is moving forward as I volley against the wall, all on my backhand side, and then I'm moving back on my backhand side. The, the main benefits of this one is it's gonna help you to be able to hit your sweet spot as you get into a match. It's a great warm up for a match. It's also just a great drill in general to be able to hit your sweet spot. And also it's gonna help me with my control because back here I'm gonna to have to be hitting harder and up here I'm gonna to have to be hitting softer. While I'm up here it's coming faster, while I'm back here it's coming a little bit slower. So I start back, find my range really quick and then I start moving forward into the wall. Notice I'm not going super fast, right? But it's just nice and controlled. Now I'm getting more distance, more distance. Then I'm coming back in. And I'm trying to do this as many times as I can. I'm not focused on doing it super fast for this drill, but hey, that's completely up to you if you wanna do it super fast after you do it slow or something like that. My whole focus here is just to hit my sweet spot, give me a good warm up. Then I'm gonna to switch to my forehand side. Forehand side's a little bit more tricky because if I try to hit a forehand in here, my elbow gets in the way of me going and, and hitting that flush. Whereas on the backhand side, I can literally reach to here and I, I'm totally fine. So as you do your forehand, this is a tip that will really help you. Focus on keeping it on your dominant side, just to the side, just outside your shoulder with every single shot. Uh, you'll see maybe a couple of times, you'll get choked in and you'll get it right here in the hip but no problem in hitting a backhand really, really quick to just reset that ball. But focus on keeping it just outside that dominant shoulder and it'll really, really help you with your control. So I'm coming into the wall, nice and controlled. Coming back, and then I'm coming back in. This just really helps you to be able to find that sweet spot and really helps you with your control. Because as you're in here, you're hitting softer, but the ball's coming back faster. And so that prepares you for an actual match. Whenever someone's hitting fast at us and low, we're gonna wanna be hitting soft to reset the ball. And then when we're back, the ball's coming slow, we're gonna wanna be hitting hard to get it all the way to, the, to our opponent, in this instance, to the wall. So that's the first drill, absolutely love that one. It's a great warm-up drill as well. Uh, the second drill is alternating volleys. With this, we're gonna be creating a triangle shape. So with the triangle shape, the center of the wall is our friend. So we wanna be able to hit the center of the wall every single time. The main focus of this drill is placement over power. So again, I'm not trying to outpower myself during this drill, but you can definitely do that in later uh, reps. So after you've done this you know, 100 times, you've really got it down, then all of a sudden now you're gonna speed it up slightly and then speed it up slightly and speed it up slightly. And that's typically what I like to do as time goes on. So I'm focusing on, on creating that triangle shape. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm starting here and I'm hitting a backhand and it kind of creates that little triangle around my face. So start with a forehand. If I can hit the middle of the wall, I'm in good shape. But hey, if I don't, all it's gonna come down to is my footwork to get around the ball. So let's say I do that. Let's say, sorry, it's kind of hard to do it right now, but. Let's say that I accidentally hit it to my forehand again. I have no excuse to not shift my body and hit a backhand there. And this will help you in matches because you actually want to be shifting when you're in matches as well. 
So let me just show you what that looks like. I'm trying to, this is hard for me to, to do it wrong, if that makes sense, because I've done it so much. But if I go one, yeah, like that. If I go one that's a backhand, I'm getting around it for that forehand. Maybe right there, I'm getting around it as much as I can. So if, I, if I'm ever messing up, it's like, okay, that next one, no matter what, I'm trying to hit a backhand, I'm shifting to the side. I'm not gonna be able to do it every time. Like I said, so it starts slow and cooperative, but then we're slowly speeding it up. And what you'll see a lot of the time, just handcuffed myself, but what you'll see a lot of the time with players is they will hold it where they think the ball is gonna go. So they think that it's coming to their backhand because maybe the ball is over on that side of the court. So they dink it over there, it's coming to their backhand, but then their opponent whips it to this side of them. The best players in the world have an enhanced ability to be able to get to this position faster than amateur players. So if you can get to this position fast from what I've found and to this position fast, you're gonna be ahead of majority of people that you play with, unless they, they practice it as well. So it's a great drill for that, for practicing switching sides. We're focusing on keeping our knees bent as we're hitting through these shots too. And I'm not flat footed, right? I'm not just hitting through, hitting through like that. I'm actually moving and I'm getting low with the ball. So if I slightly miss hit, see how I shift there as it comes to my forehand? Stay in the point as much as possible. So something interesting is a lot of players will be like, oh, okay, I figured it out. I just did 10 in a row. Let's move on to the next drill. But what you need to do, and this is actually a suggestion from the number one player in the world, Ben Johns, is once it starts feeling good, okay, relatively good, everybody moves on, says that's the time when you literally need to just hunker down and hit a thousand more. I know a thousand sounds like a lot, but maybe set a goal, hit 200 more, right? Maybe your first training session. Hit 200 more once it starts feeling good, you'll be absolutely shocked at how much that pays dividends in the future with your, uh, with your volleys and the overall consistency of your volleys. So be sure that you are getting your reps in. Once it starts feeling good is when you wanna actually just push through and hit a thousand more. That brings us to the third drill. So this is probably my favorite wall drill. This is the most advanced of them, but you actually need two walls and a corner. And so I have that. If you guys don't have that, go to your local rec center. They'll typically have racquetball courts uh, and it's a good opportunity to, to get two walls right next to each other. So since I have these two walls right next to each other, I'm going to come right down that center crack. And I like to start back. I actually stay back here majority of the time whenever I drill this, just because I feel like it's more effective for me. But the closer that you get, the more fast it's gonna be as time goes on. But for these purposes, I think it's a really good standard to use to start back. Once you get it down here, you're gonna scoot forward and now you're doing it faster. The way that it works is I'm hitting a forehand to this wall, and then as it's coming back, I hit a backhand to this wall. Now this is gonna be a really trippy drill when you first start, and I remember when I first started doing it, I saw a lady do it, and she was incredible. Like, she was literally, she was standing like right here, and she was just I can't do it like how she can, it was unbelievable. But it's because she's done it so much, and she's got those reps in, and once it started feeling good, she just kept going. Okay, so she has it down in her muscle memory. And it helps you to have insanely fast hands when you're playing in matches. I know when I drill volleys against a wall and then I go and play a match, it honestly just feels like you, you can't miss, like I can't miss, so it's absolutely awesome. Anyway, so this is gonna be a, a tough transition for you guys. I, I remember when I first did it, I couldn't even wrap my head around how I hit this wall and then that wall while changing, alternating. Didn't make any sense. But essentially forehand, what really helps is just saying a forehand's going to this wall, a backhand's going to this wall, and I'm trying to catch everything out in front of me. If I let it come too close to my body, especially on the forehand side, we're in trouble. It's probably not gonna go where I want it to. So I like to start back, create that space. And then what I was gonna say is, regardless of if you have a one-hander or a two-hander that you're hitting, it's the, it's the same drill. I, so I'm just gonna show you guys both. I use a one-hander and a two-hander, depending on the situation. Which, hey, maybe I'll make a future video about that, like when to use a one-hander, when to use a two-hander. 
if you are trying to experiment with both because a two-hander can be very beneficial in certain situations and a one-hander can be very beneficial in other situations. But let me show you guys what that looks like with two hands on the paddle, just so you can see, but I'm alternating through. You guys should see the lady though. I'll, I'll try to link that below with her uh, doing her wall drill because she is unreal. But it's just this quick, and then I'm slowly getting faster and faster. So you can either get faster and faster from here or scoot forward and get faster and faster from here. But for this purpose, I like to start back here and then move forward. And now it's just a little bit faster as I come forward. You'll see this is probably, for those of us with two-handed backhands, probably gonna be a lot more comfortable, obviously, to do it with two hands. I mean, I can tell that now. It's way more comfortable for me to do it with two hands. That's typically what my drill sessions look like with a wall and um, volleys. I'm typically doing, dedicating an hour between those three drills uh, to go through each of them. So I don't know what that is. That's 20 minutes. I think that's 20 minutes per drill or around there. But it's, it's all in progression. That first drill that we're doing is helping, it's a more so cooperative drill. We're coming in and we're coming back. It's helping us to be able to hit the sweet spot. It's helping us with our control. The next drill turns a little bit more into a realistic situation where we're having to switch back and forth. And then the last drill is just straight up mayhem where it's, we're getting into a really fast hands battle going extremely, extremely fast. Sometimes I do like to finish with just absolute at random volleys and I'm just going hard against the wall that's in front of me. So typically that'll just look like it could go anywhere and I'm focusing on shifting. I'm coming over the ball, hitting top spin through each shot, but it's all at random and this really helps you to apply it. But most of the time I don't because I'll typically line up my drilling sessions right prior to actually playing in a rec game um, or the day before a tournament or something like that. And then when I get into the tournament, that's my opportunity to make it live. Um, but what I would say is for wall drills, volley, volley drills for walls are absolutely opportune as compared to other, other strokes that you could be working on. If you're trying to work on other strokes, I would suggest getting a drilling partner or a ball machine. It doesn't matter the ball machine that you get, but it'll really be able to help you to get in those reps with certain things. That being said, with a ball machine, it's not gonna be very effective to work on volleys like this because it's not coming back uh, like how it, how it would off of a wall or with an opponent. Instead, it's, it shoots out, you volley, and then you're waiting, and then, it, and then you volley. It can't possibly go as fast as this wall is coming back to you. So yes, I would suggest doing volley drills with this. Obviously, you can add on to it whatever you want. I just came out with a new pickleball drilling app has tons of different drills on it. There's a free version and a pro version. You guys can get started on the free version. It's just free drills pretty much every single week. And they just help you to improve your game. I teach you guys the technique, how to perform these drills, everything like that. So if you'd like access to that, I will be sure to link it in the top of the description of this video. We also have a podcast. I'm gonna link it in the description. It, we go over in depth the five rules that were passed in 2024. So if you'd like a more in-depth review, it'll be, I'll do it as the top pinned comment in this video. You can get on there, click that top pinned comment, and you guys can listen to us go into depth and then share your opinions on what you think of it. But it's the Picklehead Podcast. It's been a lot of fun to do. We just dropped episode number 41. On there, we do a ton of just how-to stuff. Um, we also discuss stuff like 2024 pickleball rules, discuss our opinions. So we'd love for you guys to join us on that as well. And uh, be sure to subscribe, comment below with what you wanna learn about next, and I'll see you guys on the next one.